Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. I'm in the studio with Mark, and we're talking Final Cut Pro, and we're talking about Mark's favorite subject, camera archives. <laughs> and uh, you're just sold out on camera archives. You just think they're the best thing ever. And, but you have some, some I, data I, to back that up. I, I'm sold on them, I, and I do harp on it a bit. And um, I think some people get, oh my God, camera archives again. You know, <laughs> like, and, and I do, I harp on it. But I wanted to, so, so just to back up a minute, camera archives are a way of making a backup of your data when you shoot on a camera that has a card. A bit for bit clone. A of bit the for card. clone. So when you stick the card in, instead of just dragging the data over in the finder, you go to the import window in Final Cut and there's an option to make camera archive. Yeah. And by doing that, you're making a bit for the clone of the whole structure uh, in a way that, that is protected and safe because if you import media from it, you'll never actually link to that media. You actually have to import a copy of it so it's always kept um, completely self-contained. And it's, there's nothing fancy about it. People are like, oh, I want to give to somebody on a PC, I can't. It's just a package, it's a bundle. You right click on it, you show show package contents, and it's just the card structure. It's all it is, yeah. it's just put inside a container. So yeah. it's very simple. But I wanted, so it's already, I think it's extremely valuable as a way to make sure you have a, a full, good backup of your, of your data. But I wanna give you another reason why I think you should use a camera archive. And I think this is a good one. So what I'm gonna do is import a clip from a camera archive. Yeah. So I have this new empty project here. I'm gonna choose File, Import Media, and what I'm gonna do is navigate to a camera archive on this little connected drive here. And if I go down, there's a place, My Camera Archives, and I've got a camera archive in here. And you can tell it's a camera archive by this little symbol, this little kind of film canister. And I'm just gonna select this first clip. And this is an archive of your Sabercat shoot, you know, this uh, helicopter shoot. So I'm gonna take this clip right here. I'm gonna choose Import Selected. And because it's a camera archive, I do not have the option to leave files in place. That's kind of the whole point, is if I left files in place, I'd be linking to a file in the camera archive, which means if I happen to delete the file in Final Cut, it would delete that media. That's and true. that's what we want to avoid. So right. that's why you can't leave files in place. Like you say, it treats it like it's just the, the SD card or the CF card. It is, it's just a bit for bit copy of the right. CF card. So you need to either copy it directly into the library or choose a location. So just for fun, I'm gonna choose a location to uh, put this thing, and I'm gonna go ahead and just put it on the desk. Right. Uh, I want, my desktop's <laughs> yeah, kind of mess. Well, how about so I'll, put it, I'll put it on uh, Big Vader. It doesn't matter, we'll be able to see where it is. So I'm gonna put it on this Big Vader. So just to reiterate, you're, yeah. you're, you're creating a, an external media library. Library that's yeah. linking to a clip on external outside media, of itself. Yeah. Which doesn't, this could be internal as well. Okay. It, doesn't, it doesn't matter. Okay. So I'm gonna say okay. Uh, so I'm gonna copy the file to that drive, mm -hmm. and I'm not gonna create optimized media. I'm gonna choose import. And there's our clip, just Very took a fast. second, and it's, it's here, it copied it, it made a copy of it, mm -hmm. and there's my clip. So, check this out. I'm gonna right click and choose Reveal and Finder, and it shows us where this clip is, okay? There's a clip. Now, what I'm getting to, if for some reason you damage this clip, so it's not accessible anymore. So let's look at a couple things. First of all, I'm just gonna change the name of the clip. So I'll go ahead and say, say this. This clip has a new name, because I, I was messing around and I went into my folder and I didn't really know what it was and I changed the name. All right, so I'm gonna do that and go back to Final Cut. And of course, you know, the clip's gonna be offline now, right? It's still, nope. on, it's still online. Yep, yep, you can change the name of a clip and Final Cut doesn't care. Now, is this <laughs> new in 10.1? Yeah, well, it's, it's, new in, it's new in 10, I, I believe in 10.1, I right. believe it is, yes. So you, it doesn't matter, you can rename the clip and Final Cut still knows it's there. So check this out, if I go back to the Finder and take that clip, let's move it somewhere else. In fact, I'll create a new folder called uh, My New Folder and I'll drag the clip into there. Okay, of course, now it's gonna be offline. It's still not offline. <laughs> it's still not offline, okay? I don't recommend you do this. This is, I, I don't recommend you do this. This will also work, by the way, if I had imported it into the library itself. Right. You, you could go into the library bundle and change its name or move it, mm -hmm. but I don't recommend you do this because honestly, if you do try to do reveal and finder, um, it's gonna go find the, the, the SIM clip within with the, original, the library. With the original name, yeah. yeah. And then if you try to show original, it's gonna get confused because the name has changed, okay? So you're, you're gonna have trouble getting back to it 
even though Final Cut still Which sees it here. Which is the point of, you want to avoid renaming yeah. clips anyway. Yeah. It's like, you're just doing this to make a point. Right. Final Cut right. Pro's database right. still knows where that clip is, yeah. which is your overall point yeah. here. So if you mm -hmm. did do that stuff and you realize, oh, I can't really get to it and you know, let's mm -hmm. leave it and come back to it, we'll still mm -hmm. be online, aha, okay. Now, now it's gone. Okay, I, you know, now because I've moved it around, I've changed the name, it's, it's gone. So what the heck do I do? I mean, it was sort of cached in RAM there, but guess what? You come back and like, oh my God, it's gone, and you try to reel and find her, it's gone, what do I do? So normally, if you didn't make a camera archive, you've got to... to fish find that file. Right, you, you, assume you've got a backup somewhere, you've right. got to go find it manually. But here's the cool thing. I'm going to select the event and go to the file menu and choose import re-import from camera slash archive, okay? What that means is, um, if you still got the card, you could connect the card and it would see it and recognize it and right. import from right. it. Um, but often that card is wiped. Sure. Right? It's, it's, you know, it's gone. But if you, if you had a camera archive, it'll re-import from the camera archive. Now, this menu will only show up if the original import came from a camera archive, right? right. So if we select this, we get a dialog box that says, Hey, I'm going to re-import from a camera or camera archive. Media will be re-imported from camera or camera archives for selected clips that don't have original media imported. Okay? So if I hit continue, it immediately finds, you see it made the copy, wow. little copyright, and there wow, it is. Wow, that's fantastic. It copied it back in. So now if I right click and choose reveal and finder, we get it back at that original wow, location. That's if that doesn't sell you on yeah. creating a camera I've, I I don't know what would. I mean, you could you could relink your media if you deleted it or renamed it or Forget something. Forget that. I, I just I, look, Mark. I really don't understand why people wouldn't make a camera archive. There's no there's no downside to it, right? Uh, is there is there any downside well, to it? Well, honestly, I, well, honestly, sometimes what I'll do if I'm if I do a shoot of a couple quick clips, yes, and I just want to get them in, I might not, and and my and my card has a whole bunch of other ah, stuff on I it. I see. I might not make a camera archive. Okay. I'll just grab those clips. Right. So I, even I will sometimes not do it. But normally, if we're going on on a shoot, a production, and you start with an empty card, and you want all that stuff self-contained, make a camera archive. Okay. Yeah. All just right. That, another reason for it. Excellent. Fantastic. Um, is there any other things that you want them to know about camera? Uh, no. Oh, just, oh yeah, just I know what I wanted to ask you. What? Um, does it make sense to have all your camera archives in one location? Oh. Or do you, or they just be wherever you want them? What, well, what you bring up is interesting because before 10.1, camera archives had to be in a folder called Final Cut Archives. Mm -hmm. And I believe it had to be at the root of a volume. It had to be, a, it had a, to be root of, of the drive, that's right. But now you can put them anywhere you want. Sure. So, um, it's really up to you how you want to organize them. I like to try to put them in a in a one location if my drive has enough space for it, because I know I know where they are. It's sort of a backup location. Yeah, I, that that sounds fantastic. I can see myself making a partition that's specifically designed for camera archives yep. on maybe a RAID like a a RAID five like that Pegasus, right, which is right. there. All my camera archives are there. Fantastic, Mark. That's that's really so really, really good useful, stuff. helpful thing. All right, so. Another, yet another reason to use Cam Archives. <laughs> uh, make sure you check out Ripple Training because we've got a lot of Final Cut Pro 10.1 training. He's got a multi-cam training up there that's fantastic. Uh, we have Final Cut Pro 10 specific plugins. If you're, if you're not familiar with those, check us out uh, on Twitter, at Ripple Training, on Facebook, and of course you can reach us uh, at support at rippletraining.com. Thank you for watching yet another episode of MacBreak Studio. We'll see you next time.